Bonjour à tous, ici Sprevex et bienvenue dans ce deuxième épisode de Let's Play sur Not For Broadcast, le jeu où on censure. Enfin bon, on va essayer de, de faire ça proprement. Jour 1, c'est parti. Ah pardon, jour 3, c'est parti. Un formulaire inattendu. Tu arrives à la maison et tu trouves du courrier dans le, sur le pas de la porte. Comme d'habitude, rien d'intéressant à l'exception d'une lettre qui attire ton attention. L'équipe souhaite mieux vous connaître. La curiosité l'emporte et tu le Il s'agit d'un formulaire provenant du nouveau gouvernement Advance et visant à collecter des informations sur tous les citoyens. La première page est pré-remplie. Nom Alex Winston, conjoint. Oui, bon, il manque un T. Sam, Winst Sam Winston, enfant. Charles, 14 ans, et Suzy Winston, 19 ans. Tu te dis qu'au moins ils ne se sont pas trompés. C'est manifestement à toi de remplir le reste. Mais apparemment, ce n'est pas facultatif. Question 1. Si vous aviez un nouvel emploi, quelle serait votre attitude hmm. Je vous montre aimable et je me présente à mes collègues. Un ou une collègue d'un autre service un vous confie avoir rapporté à la maison des informations confidentielles. Maintenant qu'un dossier, maintenant qu'un dossier c'est un peu important a disparu, vous aidez votre collègue à dissimuler son infraction, conseillez à votre collègue de se dénoncer, promettez à votre collègue de garder le secret et en informez votre responsable sur le champ. Je me mêle de mes affaires. Question 3. Tous les salariés d'un service ont été renvoyés aujourd'hui après n'avoir jamais réussi à atteindre les leurs objectifs. Votre chef a fixé de nouveaux objectifs nettement supérieurs aux précédents. Vous. Hum, D'accord. Donc quitter le travail à l'heure prévue. Rester au travail pour respecter les délais fixés. Partez plus tôt et allez dans un bar pour discuter de ces changements avec vos collègues. Partez plus tôt et rentrez à la maison pour retrouver votre famille. Hmm. Je suis pas trop fan du... Euh... Ah. Je suis pas trop fan de... du crunch, en gros. Même si parfois il est nécessaire, c'est pas non plus euh, en faisant en travailler, euh, trimer des gens plus que de raison qu'on va faire du bon boulot. Donc moi je quitte le travail et l'après. Euh, C'est le barbecue annuel de l'entreprise auquel votre famille et vous avez été invités. Vous, vous avez hâte de passer cette belle journée en compagnie de vos amis et de votre famille. Avez piscine ce jour-là. Y allez si vous n'avez rien de prévu, sinon tant pis pour le barbecue. Avez travaillé dur avec vos collègues et avez la certitude que cette année, la première place du concours est pour vous. J'ai hâte de passer cette belle journée en compagnie de vos amis et de votre famille. Question 5. Au terme d'une longue carrière en couronnée de, couronnée de succès, il est temps de partir à la retraite. Dans votre discours, vous énumérez vos réussites et vos succès ainsi que tous les points gagnés à l'entreprise. Passez objectivement en revue les points forts et les points faibles de l'entreprise. Concentrez sur le défi à relever et probablement en compte le cours de votre carrière. Vous n'allez pas, pas à votre point de départ en retraite. Je sais pas, je, moi, personnellement, je suis pas du genre à inventer, euh, j'ai fait ça, j'ai fait ça, je suis... Non, je préfère dire, nous avons fait en tant qu'équipe. Donc moi, je serais plutôt sur les défis à relever et les problèmes rencontrés. Mais en même temps, les plus fois, ouais, les points forts et les points faibles. Question 6, vous consacrez votre temps libre à vous détendre, écouter de la musique ou encore au modélisme Assister à des meetings politiques et à défendre vos convictions. Encourager et soutenir vos enfants dans leur passion. Jouer pour l'équipe sportive locale. Moi, ce serait la première plutôt. Question 7. Votre destination de vacances idéale au plus près de la nature, dans un endroit où vous pouvez échapper au train-train quotidien. Un endroit des paysans dans lequel vous pouvez explorer, faire de nouvelles expériences, relever de nouveaux défis. Une sortie bien planifiée dans un parc d'attractions pour faire le plein, sensation forte en famille. Une île pour tropicale, une tropicale paradisiaque pour passer des moments romantiques avec votre conjoint. Ah, les 4 sont, sont bien. Hein. 
un malé. Ah, les quatre sont bien. Mmh. Allez, par d'attraction. Le gouvernement doit avant tout garantir aux citoyens leur sécurité, liberté, bonheur, égalité. Merci de votre coopération. Maintenant, c'est que votre temps est précieux. Je vous ai reconnaissant de contribuer à mener la nation vers un avenir plus radieux. C'est dit. D'accord. Jour 5, 6. Ok, une affaire de famille. Il est tard. Sam et les enfants sont déjà au lit. Tu es sur une tasse à laquelle tu tiens un vieux souvenir rapporté de votre premier voyage ensemble. Le dessin s'est estompé, mais ce visage rigolo te donne toujours le sourire. Soudain, quelqu'un frappe à la fenêtre, te ramenant ainsi à la réalité. Dans le jardin, tu vois Chris, la delphe de Sam, avec sa tapageuse valise vert fluo. Une fois à l'intérieur, Chris s'assoit à la table de la cuisine. Visiblement, quelque chose ne va pas. Chris inspire profondément. Pardon de débarquer à cette heure, Alex, Peggy Chris, mais j'ai besoin d'un service et il n'y a que toi que je qu'à toi que je puisse demander ça. Pas trop bien que se passe-t-il, est-ce que ça va Tu veux que j'aille chercher Sam bon, Pas de problème, que se passe-t-il Tu as certainement vu toute cette folie sur le tour d'Advance. La loi sur les actifs et les richesses qu'ils appellent ça. Ils prennent aux gens l'argent qu'ils ont purement gagné pour en faire profiter les fainéants. C'est du grand n'importe quoi. On n'a jamais vu Chris dans un tel état. Je ne dis pas que les 1% les plus riches n'ont pas de ce fichu argent. Ajoutativement, Chris, ils peuvent peut-être se le permettre, mais les gens comme moi vont tout perdre. C'est horrible, mais je ne vois pas trop ce que je peux faire. Dans la famille, c'est toujours toi qui as eu le plus d'argent. Ok, excuse-moi, mais prendre aux riches pour donner aux pauvres, ce n'est pas une si mauvaise idée. Euh... Ouais, les premiers, hein, je sais pas quoi faire. Alex, ils vont tout me prendre. Tout ce, que, tout ce que j'ai passé ma vie à bâtir, je ne peux pas l'accepter. J'ai besoin que tu me rendes un service. Chris baisse les yeux. Je dois emprunter ton passeport. Euh, mon passeport, pourquoi faire Ou oh, j'ai le sentiment que la suite va pas me plaire. Ils ont pris le mien et celui de ma mo la moitié des habitants de ce fichu pays. Mais il paraît qu'on se ressemble alors. Chris fait des 100 pas. Je dois partir avant qu'il ne soit trop tard. Ensuite, mon argent et moi seront à l'abri. Mais je dois m'enfuir avant qu'il ne bloque mes comptes. Je t'en supplie, si je te demande ça, c'est que je n'ai pas de choix. Ah. Donc c'est mon beau-frère. Qui n'a plus son passeport. Et il veut prendre euh, donc euh, mon passeport parce qu'on euh, a une ressemblance. Et pour qu'il puisse partir. Si je dis d'accord, je, je deviens complice. Ça ne peut pas être aussi grave, il y a forcément un autre moyen. Ah, compliqué, hein, franchement. Euh... C'est mon beau-frère, j'ai l'impression qu'on est relativement... Euh... En bon terme. Allez, d'accord, il est à l'étage. Tu montes les marches jusqu'à ta chambre et prenons bien soin de ne pas réveiller Sam qui a réussi à ensemble avec tu dans la couette comme souvent quand tu n'es pas à ses côtés. Tu ouvres l'armoire, le coffre à fort et tu récupères le passeport. Il nous pas fatigué, brise le silence. Alex, qu'est-ce que tu fais Et rien, mon cœur, elle est rendue toi. Mon cri s'est en bas et a besoin de mon passeport afin de pouvoir quitter le pays. Sam ne dort plus et se tient désormais raide comme un piquet. Comment ça quitter le pays La situation est si grave que ça Apparemment, mais si Chris parvient à quitter le pays, tout ira bien. Je vais prêter mon passeport pour lui permettre de partir. C'est ce que semble dire Chris, mais je ne sais pas trop, tout comme je ne sais pas trop si je vais lui prêter mon passeport. Bon, je ne sais pas encore. Cela doit anéantir Sam qui a toujours été proche de sa famille. Tu sais que moi je le ferai, se décide enfin à dire Sam. Mais c'est ton passeport et je ne peux pas te, te demander d'y renoncer. 
Tu as raison, je vais le faire. La famille passe en premier. Je reviens dans un instant. Pardon, mon cœur, mais je ne peux pas. Je pense que Chris réagit de façon excessive. Ça pourrait m'attirer de graves ennuis. <rire> J'ai pas envie de faire de vagues. Je suis pas du genre à faire, euh, faire des vagues pour rien, quoi. Et là, je ne sais pas. Je connais pas assez la situation pour dire deux. Mais bon, allez, on va, on va suivre. Hein, euh, on fait confiance à sa femme et à son frère. Tu as raison, je vais le faire. Tu réfères le coffre-fort et redescends. En bas, Chris ne tient plus en place et se lève d'un bon bras. Ton arrivée dans la cuisine. Alors, tu l'as Euh... Oui, le voilà. Je te souhaite bonne chance. Pour la première fois, Chris sourit et c'est communicatif. Merci. J'apprécie vraiment ce que tu fais. Je donnerai de mes nouvelles une fonds sécurité à l'étranger. Chris prend le passeport en poussant un ouf de soulagement. Puis, il agrippe sa valise presque fluorescente et disparaît dans la nuit. Tu vas au lit, espérant parvenir à saisir un bout de couette sans réveiller Sam. Ben, elle est réveillée. D'accord, bon. Ben, on n'a plus le passeport. Déjà, ça part mal. musique des années 30 j'en profite dans 10 ans je pourrais plus dire que c'est des années 30 puisqu'on sera dans les années 30 2030 mais 30 quand même jour 8 les répercussions aïe ça pique D'accord. D'accord. Euh... Non, je mets pas le ventilateur. Oui, oui, j'ai compris. Alors... Alors, on le sait, c'est certain que ce ne représente aucun danger. Headlines always come at the start. It's really simple, mate. These two buttons at the bottom of the vision mixer, you can see they now have A and B on them. Pas and then help you pick image A on the left bottom screen here, or image B on the right bottom screen here. It's really simple. This little clock here will count down the number of seconds you have to make your decision. Provided you make a decision in that time, you're fine. And you can change your mind as much as you want until the clock reaches zero. But if you don't make any decision, you'll be fired before you even get to make another choice. I just want to say one more thing, mate. The pictures you choose to show of these people, well, that's how the public is going to perceive them. And that's going to affect their lives. So like with the adverts, choose carefully. Ok. Destination unknown. At the end of Advance's first full week in office, we ask exactly uh, who's leading this chart. Exactly Tonight, I'll be discussing what the new future might hold with a leading economist and radical free thinking. With the Assets and Wealth Act on the brink of raising living standards for the vast majority of the country, I'll be asking my guests if we're on the way to a new future. Out with the old, Remington Fist have appointed Sophia Remington as their new CEO. The following photo, taken from our archive, Gives us bah, on va essayer de faire en sorte qu'il soit bien. 
becomes the youngest female CEO in history. Sophia uh. Rewington has always impressed. She was top of her class at university and graduated with the highest honours, immediately being asked back to lecture. The markets have responded favourably to Sophia's appointment, with stocks rising 30 points in light of the announcement. In her first press conference this afternoon, Sophia announced a children's toy named Mr. Snugglehouse. Sophia promises it'll be all the rage this Christmas, but concerns have been raised about the product's safety, making a splash. Intrepid scientist Dr. David Wong and marine biologist Ingrid Svorsborg and Horgensford have today set off to explore Dante's taint. The recently discovered cave system was previously thought unreachable, but thanks to a new breakthrough in underwater flower technology, the pair hope to successfully reach the imposing central cavern and the undiscovered plant species. This is, of course, only the latest in a series of successful on va jouer le, le parfait petit toutou, euh... In a joint statement about the dangers their team might face, the pair stated, we will face the plentiful challenges together like we always have. Playing the field, rumors abound as sporting legend Johnny Hamsleeves is snapped <laughs> in the old bush by uh... the Capitals' hottest clubs. The footballer was caught while out celebrating being named Sports Personality of the Year last week, Allez. as reported <laughs> by this very programme. Uh, is socialite and performance artist Tiffany Lamour, whose recent show, Snatched Inside, Inside My Snatch, has kept her firmly in the public eye. Could romance be on the cards for these two budding anisters? And grievous bodily charm. With advance promising a radical new position on crime, how afraid should we actually be? I'll be going live around Allez, the country and talk with people who've seen the justice system from every perspective. With more and more people saying they're scared to walk the streets alone at night, could this be exactly the right time for Advance's new approach? All that, a mega move for the group of young actors who are already experiencing the positive side of the new Assets and Wealth Act firsthand. They'll be talking and performing later. That's all coming up on tonight's National Nightly News. Yep. Yep. Oui, 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 oui. C'est bon. Attention. In the wake of the government's swift enactment of the Assets and Wealth Act, we're talking about Advance's first week in office and what the new future holds. Joining me are Katie Brightman, a leading economist, and Alan James, author of Alan James is Right, The Free Man's Guide to Waking Up. Alan, the government certainly haven't dragged their heels on delivering some of the legislation they promised. But what does the Wealth Act mean for us? Nothing, Jeremy. We're still vassal slaves. We're just in prettier oh. cages. A confident dismissal there. Katie Brightman, do you agree? I'm afraid I don't, no. I think that Vance have realised that the current economic system of unlimited, unending growth is untenable, so they're changing things up. There I agree with you. They're moving to the next steps in the grand plan. Grand plan, Alan? It's all in my book. Alan James is right, Jeremy. <laughs> We're to become the great herd. Ignorant, sterile and short-lived. That's what they want. Or perhaps Advance have just realised that if we carry on the way we are, we will destroy ourselves and this planet in a mad orgy of consumption. If you'll excuse the colourful metaphor. <laughs> yes, orgy is the right word. Only it'll be the overlords having an orgy on our poor broken backs. It's all in my book. Alan James is... Shamelessly self-promoting. Katie, how do you think the rest of the world will respond to this new approach? I think they're watching carefully. Advance are the most disruptive threat that the world powers have faced since the last great war. Yes, Katie's right. War is inevitable. Thank you, but that isn't and what And this I... will not be a war like we've ever seen before. We're talking millions of deaths. We're talking high-tech weapons that can level entire cities. We're talking... Out of the wrong orifices? Mock me all you like, Jeremy. But when they murder your parents and they poison your food and they take you away to their camps for hypno brainwashing, we'll be laughing then. That might be a great way to sell books, Alan, but you know full well that isn't going to happen in a democracy. Democracy is dead. Yes, advance are radical, and change is always frightening, but the truth is that the Wealth and Assets Act has made more than 90% of the population wealthier and is on target to produce a permanent end to poverty. Bollocks! What this young lady doesn't understand, Jeremy, is that these are the same people. 
Maybe they've rebranded, but it's all a little circus act to keep us from seeing the tyrant behind the curtain. That's why you're wrong, Alan. For a start, they've mobilised the youth vote like we've never seen before. You say mobilise, I call it grooming. The grooming of an entire generation to walk happily into eternal bondage. They're like psychic paedophiles. But based on the facts, Katie, what are your predictions? The Assets and Wealth Act is only the first step. Advance now have a historic budgetary surplus, and as well as properly ah, funding our public services, they're already, they're already funneling unprecedented amounts into scientific research and the arts. Or, as I call them in my book, <laughs> oh, no, science and them. OP arts. Like opiates, see? Can we get back to the issue at hand, please, Alan? This is the issue! It's all coming from the water, the chemicals, they're pumping it full of belief juice. Don't get me wrong, I want to see these changes, but only if they're sustainable. If Advance lose their power after spending half of our GDP on dismantling infrastructure, that could be catastrophic. The catastrophe is that they're succeeding. They've got us sat here talking about their puppet show. All right, we're running out of time. Quickly, Alan, um, what does the future look like to you? A bleak space where we've all been figuratively sodomised into submission. Oh, of course. Katie? We might be on the eve of a brave new world. God knows we need some change, but we need to yep. be cautious. Let's walk forwards with our eyes open. Two very different visions of the future there. Alan James, Katie Brightman, thank you for joining me. Good. When we come back, I'll be investigating law and order before Megan meets some beneficiaries of the Assets and Wealth Act. That's all coming up tonight on the National Nightly News. One minute back. You know, yep. I think they might do some Beautiful. good. Yep. I hope so too, Jeremy. Have uh, you been paid by them then? Oh, shut the fuck up, Alan. I've never heard so much shit yeah, in my life. <laughs> well, we'll see who's full of shit, won't we? Alan, I can explain it to you, but unfortunately, I can't understand it for you. <laughs> well, I don't know what she meant by that. Oh, <laughs> Euh, y rejoué, non, euh. Non, on va pas rejouer, tant pis, hein. Euh. Ouais, d'accord. I'm just saying I'll do what I can, that's all. Oh shit, you will. She's good, you know she is. I've said I've got a word in, that's all I can do. Ten seconds, everybody. Is widow JT scared of the big bad culture with water? If that sticks, I'll destroy you. Four, three. Oh, tête à claque quand même, le... Welcome back. In our second segment, we're going to be taking a deep dive into the state of law and order in our country. Advance have already tasked what they are calling a solutions team to move this serious social problem to the top of the list. Tonight, we go behind the headlines to meet the people who live with the criminal justice system every day of their lives. First up, we have Gregory Judge, a lawyer who sees the problems close up on the front line. Can you hear me, Gregory? Yes, I've got you, Jeremy. Thanks for having me. What's it like on the front line of the hard face of the cold hand of justice? Uh, well, as you can imagine, Jeremy, we are massively understaffed in this country. Uh, we're working every hour we can just to try and cope with the caseloads on our desks. Which <laughs> must affect the quality of support you can offer. Well, we can barely keep up with demand, Jeremy. <laughs> Thank you, yeah, there just simply isn't enough being done at a systemic level to relieve the problem. Greg. We need more support from ministers. We... Uh, what are you doing? <laughs> well, we need change at a structural level, I'm Jeremy. I'm leaving, Greg. Not a good time, darling. It never is, is it? I'll be at my mother's. Uh, just hang on. Yeah. No, the, the problem isn't a local one, Jeremy. It's nationwide. J just give me five minutes. I'm talking to Jeremy Donaldson. Oh, have you mentioned your affairs? No. Well, it, uh, the affairs of the Justice Department that we should be concerned about... Hello, Mr. Donaldson. Hello, Mrs. Judge. We need... Uh, we need legislation to relieve the pressure on our public service. Sorry servants. to interrupt the news, Mr. Donaldson. Can I have a moment to tell my husband I'm leaving him? Yes, mm. I totally understand. <laughs> Quite the picture of a burdened legal sector there. Gregory Judge, thank you for joining us. Next, I'm joined by Police Chief Constable Bob Peel, a man with a very different perspective on our nation's crime. Do you think there's a problem with the system, Bob? I'm sure we all do, Jeremy. I'm sure we all long for a return to the days you could safely walk the streets of your community at night, looking in through windows and generally enjoying your neighbours without the risk of being terrorised by some thug with a knife. 
or cough. So you feel the streets simply aren't safe anymore? Where have we gone wrong, Bob? It's not a simple question, Jeremy, but I think it all comes down to moral decay. We've diluted our culture and lost touch with what it means to be a citizen of this once great country. Also, as the vicar noted in Sunday's sermon, we probably shouldn't have banned hanging. And to what do you attribute this moral decay? Foreigners, gays and gypsies mainly. It's all in the Bible. Look, Leviticus clearly states that... <laughs> no, oh, it's because... Hang on a moment. <laughs> Jeremy, you bloody no, gypsy. Just you. You. Delia? Delia, could you give me a little help, please, dear? Uh, <laughs> as I was saying, Jesus didn't like immigrants much, did he? And just to be clear, you think it's the immigrants who are responsible for the moral oh, decay? Yes. Absolutely, Jeremy. Uh, back in your box, Clive. Back in your box. Delia, I really could use a little help with this. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry, darling. I was staying the badgers. Yes, yes. I'm talking to Jeremy Dawson. Clive, could you put him back oh, in the box? Oh, Clive, you know it's Wednesday. Back, you go, back in your gift space. And you go, who's the one who's going to use it to make a change, Well, it is certainly not the responsibility of the decent, good, white people. Darling, where's the padlock? Oh, hold on just a moment. Oh, Clive! <laughs> naughty, naughty, naughty boy! Mummy said get Clive, I am not having this again. <laughs> Mummy said get back in your kids' face. No! Naughty! You beast, Clive! You As I was saying, Jeremy, moral decay. Sit. Crime Sit. is the responsibility of the criminal. Sit. No one else. <laughs> Look, everyone has a sob no, story, but we don't all end up as barbarians, do we? No, Look, when our daughter Alice comes home with an A minus, does she go on a killing spree? No, she takes two of the pills and hides under the stairs like a normal child. Thank you, Bob. Bob Peel there, really locking down the police's position on morality for us. <laughs> and finally tonight, hopefully uninterrupted, it's time to get to the heart of the matter. Tony Dawson has recently been released from prison after serving three years for aggravated assault, burglary, and menacing a swan. He's agreed to talk to us today, which is also, I believe, his birthday. Many happy returns, Tony. Cheers, Jez. Call me Titwank, Tony. Everybody else does. No, I'm not going to be doing that. Can you tell us what it's like in prison, Tony? Titwank, Tony. No. Prison's a mixed bag. It structure's quite nice, but it's a constant battle against institutionalization, as you can imagine, and obviously, Titwanks are quite hard to come by. I'm picking up that you're not alone there, Tony. Titwank. Hey! Yeah, sorry, my friends are throwing me a surprise party. Good bunch of lads. OK, well, we're trying to get back to that party as soon as possible. First, let me ask you this. Do you feel that your time spent in prison helped to rehabilitate you in any way, Tony? Titwank, Tony! Whee! I don't think it's as easy as that, Jez. Soapen! Yeah, hmm. I think asking that is an oversimplification. It sounds like it's getting quite busy there, Tony, but uh, let's try and soldier on. Since leaving custody, have you been able to find a new job? Yeah, all the boys are here. It's Big Chris, oi, oi. Little Chris, oi, oi. and Vampire Chris. <laughs> no! No! <laughs> yeah. One sec, love. Shit, when Tony's on the news. Rehabilitation's difficult with the current system, Jez. Just not set up for it, you know. It's inherently unjust. Open. So, do you feel tempted to? I'm sorry. Who's this? Open. You are joking. Chrissy Free Bollocks has only got Mr. Fancy, oh. Not now, fellas. I'm on the news. It seems. It seems like we've caught you at a bad time. The little boy. I can't really hear you, mate. It's getting a bit busy here. Jesus. Yes, we uh, seem to be losing the signal no here, Tony. fucking way, let's believe that! Well, we're just trying to get that signal back. I think we... <laughs> yes, Tony? Tony, I mean, we're literally <laughs> two seconds. Hey! How does this happen, Tony? Can you hear me? <laughs> well, we seem to have lost our train of thought there a little. Hopefully you, the viewer at home, have managed to gain a broader understanding of the serious and complex issues around law and order. After the break, Megan will be no, live with some people. plucky young thespians. Don't go away. We'll be back after these messages. One minute back, everybody. Voilà. Très bien. That went well. Piss. Am I hanging on long enough? Quite drunk. It's been a great night. In this next section, there's a bit of music. If you edit in time with the music, you can see the result on the vision mixer, and the public will love that. Don't worry if you don't, though. You won't get punished for it or nothing. Just try and stay in the groove. Also, one last tip. 
when the music starts, turn down the broadcast volume. Right, enjoy the music bit. God, I love music. God, I'm so pissed. I think I might go and throw up in a bit. Okay. Come on, it's welcome back. How hard can it be? This is on you. Ten seconds, everybody. Eight hey, seconds. We're going to open on <clears throat> Megan. Camera two. Going in five, four, three. Give me a no, camera in. Welcomes Black. I'm oh, Megan man. Wolf, and on tonight's Culture Spot, I'll be chatting with one of the first beneficiaries <laughs> yeah, of the Assets cool. and Wealth Act, a team of inspiring young people from Scritchford Sixth Form College who today received a grant from Advance to take their play, Hey friendship on a tour of local secondary schools. Welcome to you all. Well, let's start with you two, Harriet and Charlotte Winstanley-Hamilton. Girls, you must be thrilled. We are, Megan. We're overwhelmed, to be honest. <laughs> and I believe you two are sisters, is that right? Yes, Charlotte's my oldest. I'm the older, more popular one. <laughs> Only joking. Harriet and Trey were really the ones who came up with the whole idea. Yeah. So, Harry and I were shooting the breeze in the cafeteria and I said, hey, let's actually do something. So I went to look for a drama teacher. Uh, but she'd been laid off due to budget cuts. Fortunately, I directed a pantomime when I was <laughs> at university, so, so I knew the ropes as it were. Oh, right, yes, but you're the maths teacher, aren't you? Uh, yes, that's me, Jeff Algebra, maths teacher. <laughs> maths is really important. Oh, thanks, Steve. Maths is really important. Yeah, thanks, Steve. As <laughs> is theatre. It's one of the oldest art forms in history, Aristotle. Believes. I just think that when we travel around all these problem schools and the poor kids see us, they say, hey, I really want to be like those attractive kids. And that's a very beautiful and powerful hey. thing. We touch our audiences and they touch us right back. I suppose with a surname like Algebra, there was really only one choice of career for me. <laughs> <laughs> My wife, Angela, and I, we often laugh about it. <laughs> Angela Algebra. Yes. <laughs> We just want to bring a bit of song and joy into people's lives. And teach people about the difficult issues. The issues in the play are what really matter. And I think you're going to be showing us an extract from this play, aren't you? Yeah. That's right. To put into context, I play a young first year who's having some troubles at school. Her character doesn't actually have a name, yeah? Because in a way, she's like all, all of us. us. It's like a metaphor. Maybe she's you at home, or like, maybe she's you, Megan. Maths is really important. Yeah, thanks, Steve. <laughs> Put it in, coach. Yes, thanks, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, I'm going to have a little chat with your teacher while you run off and get ready. I can't yes, wait to yeah. see it. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, that way. <clears throat> so, yeah. Jeff, yeah. when did you uh, first hear about the grant? Uh, two days ago. A letter from Advance arrived at the school. Now, Nico. the headmaster thought it was all a prank, but his secretary retrieved it from his bin and brought it to me. Wow, how did you react? I also <laughs> threw it in the bin. But then, Harriet and Trey rescued it, and uh, they, they, they rang the number at the bottom of the page, <laughs> and next thing you know, we're on tour. Wow. Well, I think we can all guess which way you'll be voting from now on. <laughs> Do you know what? It's funny, because Angela and I don't usually vote. We're, we're not very political. I'm yeah. a mathematician, of course, and she's a paraplegic, mainly. But we did used to watch that Peter Clements DIY show back in the day, and so we thought, uh, why not? Let's have a go with this old democracy thing. <laughs> Okay. And here we bally well are. <laughs> Good stuff. Fucking brilliant! <laughs> so, let's have a look at a short section of Hey! Friendship. Oh, okay. Friendship. Dear Diary, I'm not sure I can take another day at this school. Another day of tears. 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 Another day of fears. Fears. But I'm still sure I walk the corridors nuke. alone. Alone. Um, Dreading what might be around every corner. What's around the corner? What's around the corner? What's around the corner? Oh, hi, Gary. Oh, heavens no! It's Gary the Fist! Gary, Gary the, the Fist! Going somewhere, little first year? Great. I've been looking for some poor victim to bully all morning. But will this make me feel better about my violent father? Violent father. Excuse me, I'm late for maths. It's my favourite subject. And so important. Um, maths is for losers. 
What? Matt is for losers. <laughs> My own stuff, cunts. Keep going, for fuck's sake. <clears throat> right. Uh, uh, maths is for losers. Now, give me your lunch money. Double lunch for me today, but why am I only truly happy when I'm eating? Not today, Gary the Fist. What do you mean, not today? Who are you? Oh, my arm's free coat. Brilliant, keep going. <laughs> right, uh, uh, who are you to stand up to me? I'm Gary the Fist, and you're just a sad little girl with two gay dads who's all alone. That's where you're wrong, Gary the Fist. These are my two new friends. Vanessa is captain of the netball team. Yeah. And Blake owns a motorbike. Yeah. But, but, I can't fight all three of you. And I don't have any friends of my own. Très bien. Yep. Take a look at me. Take a little look mm. at my face I could be you She could be you And you could be me Or you could be me Life can be be cheeky Hello, I work as a team Compliqué, hein, je sais pas quoi mettre. Hey, listen up, I won't take no crap. Who said middle class girls can't rap? I ain't afraid of your cool, cool laps. I'm a mother loving rebel, but I still love Max. <rire> je fais vraiment n'importe quoi là, je sais pas quoi. I'm Gary the Fist. People think the folks like me probably shouldn't exist. But that's just prejudice. And I'd do better if you knew the way that I became Gary the Fist. I grew up on a council estate. The park was hip, but the flats weren't great. My dad used to come home drunk and late. And he'd hit my mum for dinner. He had to wait. Oh, where's my dinner? Hitting women is wrong. Yeah. I guess life's pretty hard on a council estate. 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 Alors <laughs> 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 Avec le drapeau qui tombe à l'arrière. Well, thankfully, that's all we have time for tonight on the National Nightly News. Yep. Join us tomorrow night for all the headlines <coughs> from across the country. My name's Jeremy Dalton. Have a peaceful night. And we're out. Oh, that was brilliant. <coughs> What <coughs> the literal fuck was that? <coughs> I believe <coughs> that was art. I believe I've got a 14-inch cross, but let's make it so. I have a similar belief about an adequate paycheck. Friendship! Oh, oh, someone please get these twats out of my studio. OK, très diffusion terminée. E, B, E. <rire> c'est... Ah, oh, c'est dur. Hein. C'est... Waouh C'est pas très grave. Euh, vous avez réussi un petit peu à payer. Fondue actuelle, pauvre épauché toujours. Ah non c'est atroce, <rire> ça diminue, merde. Alors, hop. Ah, le directeur il m'aime pas, il m'aime plus, il est déçu. Eh bien.